this is our math spec. So, how does this work? Well, we have a old blood sample still sitting here, actually. There it is. Yeah. It's still kept from your dry blood spot, right? Okay, so, um, this is a sample. So what happens in your sample? We manipulate the thermodynamics of this oven so we can selectively elute analytes, or our, one of our 126 metabolites, from the end of that column. And that's one dimension along which we separate our metabolites to know what's in the blood and how much of it is there. The electron ionization source. This takes the, the air, the vapor on the helium with the analytes in it, with the metabolites in it, and it, and it ionizes them. This comes in this way, and we bombard it perpendicularly with an ion beam, with an electron beam. And we're able to definitively, with high specificity, identify which compounds they are and quantify them by the area under their peaks. How do we know what we say is what we say? There's a database called the Human Metabolome Database. And on that database, they've injected not blood, but standards of known concentrations. How do, what have they done? They've bought standards, usually from like Cambridge Isotope Laboratories, Avanti Lipids, whatever. There's tons of suppliers that you can buy standards from. And it's a pure chemical standard, 99.9999, right? And they inject that. And they see what's the retention time and what is the um, what is the mass to charge for that. And they've curated that information. Based upon their mass spectrometry and the columns they've used, I've brought in that information. Curated these metabolites based upon their relevance to human life. Caffeine is in here, ibuprofen is in here, some exogenous metabolites are in here, some systemic environmental pollutants are in here, their downstream human metabolites are in there. That's how we calculate our environmental toxin exposure scores. Man, if you could see what I see, this is a gift. Yeah. This is a gift. So yeah, we're, we, might make, we might make a dollar or two, but overall, that's the mission to let humanity know itself, truly, at a molecular level. Yeah. Then you solve it all. Let me go show you how you process yeah. it from the beginning. See it. Okay, so we take tubes, and in those tubes, we put in little ceramic beads. So your, your, your dry blood spot comes, your dry blood spot card comes. I take a biopsy punch. These are disposable punches in these like single wrapped um, packages, right? I take a biopsy punch, I use one for example, and I cut out your one of your punches, that's all I need. I save the other one until I make sure the data that comes off the machine looks good, just in case I need to reanalyze it, right? One gets punched, goes in a tube with some ceramic beads. The other punch goes in the minus 80, just until we um, need to get it, right? You put your tube in here. You put the tube with the reagents. You have some liquids that go in there. So you have some, you have your reagents to extract the metabolites out of the filter paper and precipitate the matrix. So basically it binds the paper together and it sucks the metabolites out of the paper. And the next thing we do is we put the ceramic beads in the tubes with it because we want them to bounce around the paper and really break it apart. How do we do that for 20 seconds? We shake the shit out of it. And that homogenizes it. If you have a tube in there with your sample and the two ceramic beads, um, 0.8 millimeter diameters, it's gonna like destroy everything. You're gonna get like a big like sludgy thing in there. It's gonna be just red. It's gonna be torn apart paper. And the metabolites will have separated. From it. Then you come and you take the tubes and you fill this with ice and water. Um, and then you turn it on. This is a sonicator. This puts frequency into your samples. Hmm. Why does it put frequency in your samples? You just broke apart all the paper. You've with the chemicals you've extracted a lot of the metabolites out of that paper, and you're making sure you're getting what's called um, good analyte retention, right? We don't want matrix in there. Matrix is the paper. Matrix can actually suppress ionization at that source, at the source you saw the electron beam. If you have matrix in it, doesn't the, the ionization efficiency goes down and the sample doesn't get ionized and you don't get your good peaks. So to, to do that, we have to really make sure the analyte gets out and the paper is reduced. We do that here. And then we put the samples in here and then we use supersonic blasts essentially at certain frequencies. If you come in close, you can hear it. Oh yeah. Now if we were putting some water in here, you would see this in, and with the ice, you would see the surface of the water and ice go blah, 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 blah,
right now you're not seeing it. I don't want to fill it up and have to dump it out later. Yeah. But it blasts it with supersonic waves, thereby separating any metabolites that are still stuck to that paper with the blast of the supersonic, the gentle wave of the supersonic frequency to 80, kil uh, 80, <clears throat> yeah, 80 kilohertz. That is going to separate more metabolites from the paper, right? So then we take that, then we go to our centrifuge, which is over there. We can go take a look at it. And we centrifuge the sample so that we have a big paper shredded mess that basically becomes white again because we supersonic uh, uh, blasted all of the uh, whole blood off of the paper. And then you get an aqueous top layer, which is just like red liquid, which is the blood and reagents, right? And this is our uh, centrifuge. We put it in here and uh, we centrifuge at four degrees Celsius. Okay. Once we centrifuge, that, that mess basically becomes all the hard, heavy paper on the bottom and then just an aqueous layer at the top. We take that aqueous layer out and we go and dry it in that dryer you saw in mm -hmm. that room. So that, that dries under vacuum at 37 degrees Celsius and it takes the, the metabolites and takes all the reagents and the chemicals we put in it and evaporates it off, leaving only the metabolites there at the bottom in dried residue form. I've had kids um, throw away the tubes, the undergrads, because they think there's nothing in it. But if you look closely, you can see this thin white film is on the bottom of it. Now that's your, you know, that's your metabolite, uh, dried residues. What we then do is we derivatize it with some reagents, some more chemicals, and that derivatization puts it in a state where basically we become thermally unstable. Why do we want it to be thermally unstable? Because we want these chemicals to get ionized, vaporized at the uh, inlet of the GC so they can fly through that tube and get out. If you have a thermally stable compound, it doesn't vaporize well. So we want to take the metabolite and transform it into a state that's, that's thermally unstable. We want to volatilize the compound. We want to derivatize it to a different form of itself. So what we do is we come here to our heat bath. We turn it on, we set it to uh, 60 degrees. These kids might have set it to 90 for their experiments. Yep, they go to 90, I go to 60. 60 90 would destroy us. We heat this block up and we put our samples in there and we derivatize them. We change them to the form we need. Then what we do is centrifuge it one more time. We separate it to two layers. There's a derivatized layer, which is just like the chemicals that we put in it. And then the aqueous metabolites form their own layer. After they've been derivatized and undergone the reaction, they go up. We extract that top layer. We put it in a vial, just like you saw, where it's like that, um, you know, it has this uh, little glass uh, mass spec vial, uh, plastic septum on top, and this little insert that goes into the vial and it reduces um, the volume because you need a lot of volume to fill up this um, uh, vial so the needle can sample it, but if we put it in this tiny little insert, the volume is reduced to a maximum of 100 microliters. We inject 70 microliters from that supernatant from the second centrifugation, and we have your aqueous metabolites ready to go. Then it goes into GC. Then we separate our retention time, we separate our mass to charge, we quantitate, we compare it to the known high and low levels, we do the concentration ratio, we plug it into our um, pre-established models, we generate the 12 health domains, that is the analysis. And people get to partake in this for 800 bucks. Like for me to see this and realize all that goes into it and the yeah. domain knowledge and that kind of stuff, it's like nuts that you can partake in a, a study. Like, yeah, yeah I mean, like it's, it's actual science. This is what I say, like there, there will be an inflection point we reach where like there's gonna be some copycats. So there's gonna be some fast follower Me Too companies come along and they're gonna realize, oh shit. Like, we were selling like an aging test and a mitochondrial test that these guys just do it by levels and they integrate it using the, you know, the central dogma of biology. That's what we should have done. Oh, okay, let's do that. Let's reorganize. There's going to be some people doing that. There's nobody doing that now, but us. And the faster we, we get there to multiple levels, the more benefit we generate for this, this public good.